Hey. All right. <laughs> well, my stream has started, so welcome one and all to another pocket mission adventure. Uh, looks like today, as you can see on the uh, the visible piece of the map at the bottom, there's the code uh, WBWDCDCAF02, Harangon Harana, or Harana is probably how you'd pronounce that. And this is the second part to uh, to the one that I put on the same time two weeks ago. Um, that one was more pixie related, uh, but they don't necessarily have to have played the first one to understand what's happening here, of course, uh, but it is in the same location and, and maybe mentions, you know, a couple of the same NPCs. Ooh, that, uh, oh. that white noise is loud. Get me. And it's better now, but it was like really, really loud for a second. Oh, no, I'm sorry. No, no worries. No worries. Just want to make sure y'all can hear me. But um, anywho, so that's where we're going to be um, in the, the Feywild domain of Maycanta. So, I believe a couple, or at least one of you, maybe, a couple have did actually play the last adventure, but I don't believe uh, the same characters. But uh, you'll at least, as a player, be somewhat familiar with the area. And uh, just to set a little background, it says about a hundred years ago, there was a half-elf archmage named Donya Leia, who ran away from the Sword Coast to the Fable. Through her magic abilities and her sheer will, she created a realm based on parts of herself and also her mother's heritage in the far east of Tor, and her true desire to become a performer. Her values resonated with numerous fake creatures who also helped settle the region. They called it Maycanta and created the Domain of Delight. Uh, it's marked by lush rainforests, festive towns, and constant, ever-present singing from the locals. But yeah, I don't know if there's anything we can do about the, uh, the, the white noise there, but it's very loud. And it's coming from loud in 03? Yeah, I know that's... Yeah, it's yeah. They're saying they can't hear me in over it. If you can uh, do anything on that, or st or stay muted at least whenever uh, whenever you're not speaking. But anyways, I'm um, sorry if you sorry if you couldn't hear that. But the it was a half elf archmage named Donya Leia. She ran away to the Feywild and uh, through her magic abilities and sheer will, she helped create a domain of delight here. Uh, kind of settled with some other fey creatures, and quite a few uh, Eladrin formed a couple of settlements around a lake, there's a river, and in the last adventure, we were in a small village right outside uh, Barangay called the Nylads that was full of pixies. So again, we're, uh, we're not too far away from there. And so, I'm not going to make the mistake of saying what I did last time and being like, you journey from the uh, material world to the the Feywild because then it turned out half the party was from the Feywild. So instead, uh, you got a little bit of background for the area now. Um, it's full of performers, uh, famous singers, especially musicians would gather here. So a, a couple uh, adventure hooks could be that you know you're just a uh, a performer or entertainer kind of out looking for um, some training or a place to to share or or perhaps participate in uh in this upcoming festival that uh that's going on um, or you may just be an adventurer who happened to be on a boat in the mist singing a song and before you know it you found yourself in a different place all entirely so i'll leave that up to you and we'll just go down the line starting with uh samuel is it sam yeah, you can tell me how to say it so I don't butcher it. And then, yeah, you know, just the general stuff of who you are and, and what you're doing. And then if you'll tell us how you got here to uh, to Barangay and in the Domain of Delight, make him. Uh, Samael was actually just in a adventure before where he was introduced to Feywild. He decided to take the back door in the magical pub to enter the Feywild, so he's checking it out for the first time. Um, he is a level 3 paladin, uh, Metallic Dragonborn. Okay, awesome. And so when you went out of uh, the, the Ember King's Tavern, 
you were immediately drawn to this singing uh, coming from some bright lights peeking through uh, what seems to be like lush forests. Uh, it didn't take too long before you arrived. And how about Blue? Uh, this is Dadalan. He is a red dragon born, a fighter in sort of Eastern style heavy armor. He simply wanders around doing, he's simply a rather regular adventurer do, wandering around and doing quests wherever he can and doing good for those that need it. And seeing as how he, seeing as how this seems a popular place, he wanted to check by to see if there was any need for a, need for a sword hand here for any sort of duties aid that needed to be done and so the ever constant danger that lurks around every corner uh, is actually seem to be not quite present here yet um, you, you sense that there may be some, some foes to fell in the forests and things but as you approach looking for the, the job at, at hand uh, it seems like actually most people here are singing and as you go through the streets you see uh, what appears to be a lot of lovers and they're the the men and sometimes the women are playing instruments and singing to uh, their desired and they're usually up in balconies or things like that and blushing and and calling down either their uh, distaste or more often their uh, their pleasantries to the would-be suitors below and you you realize you've arrived in uh, some kind of weird celebration here and uh, how about Perrin you know tell us about yourself well, Karen was here last time, um, helping the pixie uh, find her dream of uh, heading out to the city to perform. In, in that time, he's uh, realized that uh, his performance wasn't all that great when he tried, and so he's been working on that, and he feels like he's definitely at least a plus three better now. <laughs> um, but he's also kind of sensed that his work's not quite done here, so it's not quite time to move on. All right, and as you uh, kind of wonder, last time Ali the Pixie had mentioned uh, Berengue nearby and her desire to go there. And of course, you know, why not stop by and check it out for yourself? And um, it's every bit as wonderful as she described. And, and maybe even perhaps you'll see her in passing as she's starting to learn uh, how to use her Pixie abilities and, and how to be more of a performer. Um, until you come across one figure whose singing seems to be a little bit more clear than all the others, and you see what seems to be a pretty young Harangon there. Uh, we'll pick that back up in just a second. How about you, Marikani? Well, it happened again. Uh, Marikani is a human being, just a human person. Um, kind of wandered up, and he looked like he was looking for something, and he everybody introducing themselves and uh he introduced himself as Marikani. hello just in town just uh hanging out and um looking for my dog mitch what are you guys up to uh as soon as he realizes your adventures he's going to sigh and say not again and he's going to say well did it last time might as well do it this time you guys need some help and uh, yeah, he's not, he's not really an adventurer. He's just a guy walking around looking for his dog. And for the second time now, he's, he's run across a, a team of adventurers that look like they might need another, another person. So here he is. Uh, you, you were always on the Ember team, right? Yep. So it looks like both of you two guys. Uh, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, your awesome. friend. Hello, Samuel. <laughs> And so you, uh, you think, gosh, what? I'm trying to remember. What did you say the dog's name was? I was like, it's like tip of the tongue. Yeah, Mitch. Mitch. So you think Mitch might have went out that back door in the tavern as well. And so you follow Samael and uh, you're drawn to the same singing as him as you wander through first kind of some, some forests and you see uh, a large lake out in the distance with the, the rising and the falling of the singing. You see a, a golden mist that will form um, Every once in a while, a traveler will kind of appear out of the mist on a boat. But you guys have all wandered into to Berengue, and you hear the, the suitors are singing. And 
of course, that one clear voice uh, kind of is above the rest as if it's calling out in need of help. And, uh, you know, a couple of you know each other and are walking together, but somehow you find all four of yourselves drawn in, in this little square where a little uh, gray heron gone is, is singing a song. Uh, insert the chorus of Nickelback's rock star here, apparently. <laughs> We gotta, watch, we gotta watch what we do on Twitch though, because you know they'll uh, they'll give us that season desist or whatever. Gotcha. <laughs> but alrighty. Um, oh, you are. Uh, you must be one of those guys. And um, and Mary Kenny's gonna approach this. This Heron God is playing. Is, it, is this your letter? Uh, so after the last uh, sort of adventure he had, Mary Kenny got this random piece of mail addressed to him and uh he he really believes that it, it belongs to some kind of a boy band and it's just a coincidence his hair gone is here singing it's like this letter i don't want to join your club or whatever and here take it and he, he just uh he hands it over to the hair god see if he takes it sure he, yeah he looks at it and he uh he's he's like oh um are you sure it's not just one of these posters? And you see a poster off onto the side that has the portrait of a bronze-skinned half-elf with black hair, and underneath it says, Doña Lea, one night only, win her gaze and become a star. And then uh, you see the little Herringon's eyes like looking at it longingly, and then he like turns back to you and kind of peers down at the note, and he's like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, mister, I'm, I'm not sure what this is. Is it you? This is some kind of boy band, right? He wants me to join the club, and it's got a little harp on the corner. It's got to be you. This is just too big of a coincidence. Well, I mean, I'm more of a solo artist. Um, you know, bands, it's hard to get famous in bands, from what I understand. But, you know, if uh, if you wanted to be a support, you know, you could just be like a touring musician with me, maybe. But that's, that's totally up to you. But you do seem awfully willing to help me. Oh, I wish Doña Leia would put her gaze on me it's it's my biggest dream to sing a song for her and and have her choose me as one of the best musicians and invite me to her palace it's it's kind of the the one year celebration we do um do you know what a, a harana is no but since we're asking questions have you seen a dog he's just running around he's got a little chew toy it's just uh not, not to upset you. It's a, it's just a, uh, a stuffed animal. Um, and I, I think he ran this way out the back door. Have you seen him? You know what? I think I might have seen him, but it was a little while ago, and I'm, I'm not sure where he went. But maybe he'll pop back up again. Uh, Those were the darkest. I running across that candy land place. Yeah, I definitely <laughs> saw a dog, and. Uh, you know, we had a druid come by and ask him. He said he was Mitch. He's looking for his owner. Um, and then yes. he had been on all sorts of adventures and was just going to keep on going until he, he found you, I guess. Wow. All right. Thank you. Now, what's all this about, about some lady? Well, once a year, as I was saying, Donya, she'll put on uh, a little series of performances. Um, it's It's a little corny, but... As you can see with some of these people around here, it's tradition to, to go and sing a harana, which is kind of like a, a love song from, you know, a would-be uh, suitor, I guess. Um, I'm only 18, so I've, you know, I've, I've got a couple girls I like, but I haven't really, you know, I want to become famous first, and then I can worry about, you know, singing a real harana. But <laughs> you just have goals to aspire for. Yeah, you know the women—they just drag you down. Other than Donya, I mean, if she if she wanted to, uh, oh, he starts to blush a little. Oh, never mind, never mind. But anyway, she'll uh, she'll go out on her balcony in the in the middle of town, and everyone takes turns trying to get her uh, her admiration. You know, we just sing and sing, and uh, only the best of the best uh, she really gives her attention to, and and allows to come into her palace uh, for the real party. Well, I've got a problem though, guys. As you can see, I'm a beautiful singer, but it takes more than that. I've got to have a guitar. And you know, I have this instrument here and he pulls out uh, what is oh so clearly a very special item, but very so clearly wrong for him. Uh, you know, this instrument's pretty cool, but I just 
it's not mine. It's not for me. I need a guitar, and it needs to be the right size for me. This is a, this is a loot. Um, but it can do some pretty cool things. And you know, if you guys are, uh, are are willing to help me get the right instrument, I could probably just let you have this one. <laughs> Yeah, okay. What do guitars go for these days? Ah, that's the thing. It's it's a special honor here in, in Barangay to get a, a guitar made for you. Uh, we have a luthier here. He goes by the name of Ricardo. And he's the best. Almost every single instrument in this whole big city is made by his hands. Uh, it would be an honor and, and honestly a necessity for him to be the one to craft my guitar. Luckily, I know where his workshop is. If uh, if you guys are, are willing to help me, we could go see him and see what it takes. It seems as though there is not much that ails this town, so I came here willingly wishing to help, and it seems as though this is finally what I was looking for. I'd be glad to. Oh, thank you. You know, if, if you're looking for spooks and monsters and things, they kind of come out uh, from outside the city every once in a while, but it, you're right, it's been pretty quiet, and, you know, everyone's guards up as we uh, prepare to celebrate, so now we know it's safe, and the drinks start to flow. I mean, what happens after that? Nothing bad. Our guard's down. Well, who would do that? But anyways, he's, uh... Well, I, I guess we could uh, go see, see Ricardo, and, and perhaps he could help us out. And, uh... I do it with insight. Sure, yeah. He looks like twelve. <laughs> Is he really eighteen? Yeah, he's just a little little herring guy, barely <laughs> okay, becoming Okay, buddy, you just have some very weird genes. Okay, buddy. <laughs> well, you know, my my uncle, he was uh, he was a big one. He was almost as tall as some of you folks but every you know we come in all shapes and sizes I just was <laughs> my mom said Besides. it doesn't make me any less of a man though Besides, he's clearly wearing slacks not jeans <laughs> right this is uh this is my business attire um you know i wanted uh donia to think i was like a serious and cool not just like some immature kid you know well they say dress for the job that you want Oh, you're right. I should have wore the more festive jacket. Dang it. I left my hair. Right, let's go see Ricardo. Okay. Uh, it's just right through here. And he starts to lead you through the streets. And uh, it's, it's quite jovial. And you hear the songs come from left and right, uh, singing love to one another. And people are kind of constantly moving about through the streets, either on foot or horse-drawn cart. You see mostly Eladrin, but there's quite a few Herringon and Fairy and Pixies and all types of Fae creatures. And a few, uh, you know, oddballs like yourselves that have just found their way here uh, through the beauty of song. But you eventually come up to the Le Workshop. And... You see a bunch of half-finished instruments of all shapes and sizes strewn about the area as he kind of lightly knocks and pushes the door open. In the center of the room, you see an older herringon, and he's hammering together two pieces of wood. And then he hits his thumb as you guys kind of startle him uh, coming into the door. And he's, ow! Uh, you see light kind of shining in from the windows, but it looks, you know, like the day is starting to wind down a bit. And uh, still some good daylight out, though. Uh, a little bit dusty in here, and you definitely have that smell of lacquer and wood uh, and sawdust everywhere. Um, you may be looking out for a, a guitar of Jacinto. Uh, yeah, he probably should have told you, too, his, that his name was Jacinto. Sorry about that. He told you everything but his name. But uh, Jacinto, the, your little friend, he's, uh, no, I don't see anything that's my size. But, uh, oh, hey, uh, Ricardo. Um <laughs> You see the Luthier, hey. he's uh, he's a bit older, he comes up, kind of hold, hold, uh, one hand holding his thumb. Oh, 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 oh. hey Jacinto, um, how's your father doing? He's like, oh, he's he's good, he's doing well. Uh, he said, if I see you, to tell him uh, you better come by and, and have a drink with him soon. Like, oh, 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 I will, you know, I'm so busy around here, but oh, uh, I see you have friends. What can I do for y'all? <laughs> Well, this little guy is uh, looking for a uh, guitar. Uh, yes, I should have known he was going to try to participate tonight. 
And it's true, for a Haranador to perform at his very best, he must have the best guitar possible, and one built perfectly to size. Uh, I suppose you're wanting me to help make this. Well, we were told that you were the best. <laughs> More like only, it seems at times, but yeah, I, perhaps I am the best. Um, and, you know, uh, Jacinto and... Uh, his his father and I go way back, so I could probably uh, make him make him a guitar. Uh, there's a bit of a problem though, is I I don't really have any more supplies at the moment. I've been kind of using my last bits. Uh, and it could be a little tricky to come by too. I'm I'm not sure if you would be brave enough to venture into the Encanto Forest. Uh, just for clarity, uh, this is this the same forest we went into last time? Ah, well, you know, um, if you've been into a forest around the area, it probably is. It probably is the exact same one. If you, nice. There is little I fear. I believe I would be prepared for such a journey. Well, okay then. Um... I'm along for the ride. These guys will protect Ooh. me. He kind of, uh, he's okay. Well, well, let me explain real quick. Um, there's going to be three ingredients per se, that I need here. I need some silk string. Um, you know, generally the spider string is this, this, the, the most durable and get and, uh, and flexing, flexible without breaking. Um, if you could find some of that, that'd be great. Although you always got to keep your guard up around the, uh, around any webs. Uh, so be careful. Uh, if you, if you manage to get that though, um, you know, I do some of the inlays on the guitar and, you know, some of the, uh, the little bits and ends there. I don't want to confuse some of you, uh, but it, it really goes well if I can use uh, the antlers from, from Giant Elk. Yeah, sometimes I can find them in the, uh, in the forest and sometimes I could, uh, you know, work something out with the creatures there. But uh, it's been a while, you know, and perhaps you could find somewhere to get some of that for me and... Uh, last but certainly not least, I need some wood. It's from a very special tree, though, where the bark is luminescent in gold. Yeah, you'll see it from a mile off. Uh, and it, yeah, that's pretty simple. I just need some of the bark or some of the some of the branches, if either one. You know, something I can kind of gather some of the wood from. Uh, that's pretty obvious what I'll do with that. <laughs> And, uh, and you and you see like in the instruments around him that they're all made from those same materials, the wood and the web and the, the antlers and things. But they're just all like some are finished, some half finished and stuff. But yeah, he's clearly he's out of materials. Well, um, yeah, all those things are definitely available in the Encanto Forest, but you just have to be careful, of course. But you seem pretty capable, lad. So what do you say? I'm pretty sure we're in for the whole lot. Right, guys? I say I'm game. Mm, you can do it. I will accomplish this task to the best of my ability, don't worry. Ah, such a pleasure. Such a pleasure to hear that. And, um, oh, uh, Jacinto. Uh, yeah, what, what's up, Ricardo? Uh, could you just step out for one moment, please? Uh, just gotta give them a quick thing, and, uh, you should, you should probably go ahead and start getting the preparations ready. So, uh, okay, and he kind of walks out, and he's like, oh, come here, y'all. I, I gotta tell you, even with this guitar, Jacinto's ability to win Doña Lea's favor is not gonna be guaranteed. He's gonna have to put on the performance of his little life. That said, having this guitar and all, you know, it'll be the best in all the land, of course. It'll help him immensely. But he, st he may still need your help. Uh, just, just be there for him, will you? Okay. All right. Uh, best not to keep him waiting. Uh, thank you. Thank you, lads. And uh, you see Jacinto waiting out there. He kind of has like a, a bit of a quizzical look in his eyes, but he, you know, he's he's very respectable. And says, "All right. Um. Cool. Well, I guess we should get going then. Um. The Encanta Forest is, isn't gonna wait. Uh, you know, though, I, uh, I gotta admit." It'd probably be best if I stayed back and just practiced on uh, on my song, you know. Um, but it, probably you're gonna have to be at peak performance. Yeah, and I, I'll admit I'm I'm really not much of a fighter or a gatherer or really much of anything other than a performer, so I'll probably just get in the way. 
Make sure to rest your voice. You want to keep it for when your performance begins. Thank you. I, I will. Um, I'm going to go drink some tea with honey right now and and, uh, and start doing some do-re-mis here and there. But uh, it, here, uh, I, I put on a little note here, just some brief uh, descriptions on how to get to some of those places. Uh, it's pretty well known where some of the stuff can be. Just how to get it can be a, a different question, I suppose. But uh, he kind of gives you, uh, there's three locations, of course. Uh, there's the wood, the web, and the uh, and the... Um, the antler and uh, so he kind of uh, it seems as if uh, you could do it in any order really as long as we get everything on the list um, so I'll, I'll be waiting for you guys leave the preparation for your guitar to us he nods and then uh, and then yeah the question is pretty much just up to you guys uh, which one of those uh, materials you But what do you I say, friends? I don't Does think I'm seeing closer? Um, they're all pretty... It, you can tell by looking at the uh, the map that they all would seem to be pretty relatively uh, the same distance, although you you can see that it seems to be an unexplored section uh, from compared to where you guys were last time. Well, we should I probably doubt we would be able to get the giant horns without a fight, so... Perhaps getting uh, there first. A lot of uh, horned animals for such an encounter would be best. Uh, potentially, a lot of horned animals actually shed their horns yearly. So, then in that case, hopefully there does not need to be a fight. But I personally would would rather not have to take down a giant elk. They're very majestic creatures, and like a thirty percent chance of one being a druid. Seventy-five <laughs> percent chance that one knows the druid. Yeah, yeah, you'll get on the druid blacklist for that kind of stuff. <laughs> okay, so which one of the three uh, sounds the most appealing to you guys? You got the. Well, unless you absolutely hate spiders, why don't we start with the string? That is fine with me. There might be a fight as well there, so. My same point, Mike. Yes, but I don't feel as bad about killing spiders. <laughs> <laughs> then that seems like a good choice to go first, then. Okay, it's two out of four. Uh, what do you guys think? I'm worth right there with you. Okay, that's majority. Out of four. So let me, I'm uh, scooting y'all up from this part of the map all the way up to the top right in that long rectangle. And then uh, here's uh, probably be best to just do a straight line to keep it the most simple. Uh, do you guys want to give yourselves a quick marching order um, as you would approach uh, approach the area indicated on the map? Uh, I'll be in front. I'm a paladin. Uh, Perrin will actually volunteer to be in front because he's a good tracker. Oh, then I'll be behind you. I will hold up the rear then and keep an eye out in case anything comes from behind. And okay. I'll be right in front of the guy in the rear. All right, so there we have go. Perrin first, right? And then we had Samael. Oh, vertically that way, okay. Yeah, either way is fine, I, I guess, but this probably makes the most sense. Um, all right, so the leaves in the forest uh, canopy shade the area from the sun as you approach where you think the webs will be on the little piece of paper. You can see where Jacinto's drawn a quick sketch of like a spider's web and uh, go ahead and Perrin make me, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, just go ahead and make me a strength safe and see what you can do real quick. Oh, Okay, so on your trip there, um, the, the Encanta Forest is full of lush green foliage, beautiful flowers, and it even seems like some of the plants and little critters and things are like singing around you as you go. It's just, if you like the music, then this place is awesome. But if you don't, you're like, feel like you're stuck in some weird little like animal singing wonderland, like the worst Disney movie or like the, uh, the South Park parody or something. You're just like, like, why? Why? It never stops. The voice is in my head. 
but all in all, it is uh, quite pleasant for the most part, uh, unless you're just not into that. But uh, it takes. Yeah, likes the music. It's somewhat, somewhat distracting. <laughs> And for Perrin, uh, with that strength save, you you just fail to uh, to notice. Um, there's a little hidden web, um, and, and you slip down, and you find yourself stuck into a much much larger web. And so I'm gonna go ahead and reveal the map, and then uh, and then I will move you, Perrin, and then uh, and then we'll just go from there. So. And then really quick, so just just to make sure, so you had f just walked into that, and it kind of like is a little sticky shoot that shot you down, just where you're stuck right here. Uh, you're just restrained for the moment, but you see these two spiders kind of go hmm in the web, uh, but they don't move to attack or anything quite yet. And uh, and just really quick, let's uh, let's get our our APL. Um, everybody's level three, right? Or Hello. Aaron is level four. Okay. I am uh, level four. Uh, level three. Uh, Maricani, you're level four. Two. My bad. You can... Okay, I see you right there. Two. Close to an average of three. Okay, cool. Uh, All right, so there's actually a third spider, but you notice it's a little different. Um, oh no, more spiders. <laughs> but a baby spider. I can squish with my foot. Yeah, it's never the baby spider. <laughs> I'm like, hey. Quick adjustment there. Thanks for the, the patience. Okay. So you see one larger spider and two smaller ones. I know this one will be a little hard to see in the web maybe, but she's over here. And they kind of click, and and uh, you feel little twinges in the web there, Perrin, as they are kind of uh, communicating a little in their own way. But then they kind of crawl up to where you are and uh, I would assume your friends would probably approach to wonder what's going on but y'all guys can kind of place yourselves however you want um, <laughs> because they don't attack uh, you can see that this place is pretty shaded from the by this forest canopy as well as the sun is you know it's already kind of slightly on its way down in the sky and things so it's pretty not quite dark but definitely dim here um, and despite even it like not quite being night, you could like hear some nocturnal sounds like crickets and owls and things. Um, what's everybody? Let's see. Passive perception looks like so. Dadalan, Dadalan and Perrin, um, especially you, Perrin, as you kind of like let's just say you're like stuck a little bit with your face down, and when you open your eyes, you see like a face looking back up at you, except for it's clearly dead. Uh, looks to have been probably used to have been an elf, uh, but it's definitely dead. Um, and as uh, so, Samael and Marikani, you don't really see that off the bat, but Dadalan and almost oh, certainly Perrin, you do. Uh, in addition to that, the two spider or the three spiders, sorry, kind of come clambering up a bit. Um, and the large one, she looks to the small ones and says, "Well, well, sister," and kind of a strange uh, inflection of common. Look what we have here! And then the other one says, "Indeed, sister." And the third one, we have guests. I know it's very embarrassing for me to drop in like this. I'm going to put my hand on my great sword and we'll just on the hilt of it and be like, Perrin, do you need aid getting out of that web? Or are we trying to hold off? I don't know. Can Perrin break the uh, away from the web? Yeah, you can try with a strength check. Strength check or athletics? That just says strength check, so... It's just a straight story. Nope. 
And yeah, so you feel that it's possible with enough force, but uh, you're just kind of a little bit bound up, and you hear like a clucking, ha ha, where are you gonna go? You're going to miss dinner. <laughs> Hold on, my friend is stuck. Hey man, do you need some help getting out of there? Can it I would to... be polite <laughs> to leave. Oh, you just got here, and we were a bit bored. Well, no, we don't We don't necessarily want to leave. We just don't want our friends stuck in the web. It's, it's less very uncomfortable for him. It's the most like, comfortable place you could be. Isn't that a right, Arachne? Oh, yes, Phoebe, yes. That's so, cr- that's so true. Maybe for you, but don't assume that for others. Can I grab him and try to pull him out? I'm going to try. Is that something I can do with a strength check? Mm, mm. Uh, yeah, you can. Go ahead and uh, make that uh, that strength check for me, please. We don't have inspiration, right? Nope. Oh, actually, yeah, I would have given that to you all from earlier. If uh... This would be a good place to use it, because I don't know what's happening next. Okay. Yeah, my fault. Sorry about that, too, Perrin. You could have used that earlier, and I, I would have said that. But, hey, you still got it. You might need it. Yeah, it looks like you did. It's not like they jumped on you and started biting or anything. So, you know, you had a chance yeah. and everything. I didn't just throw you into something terribly and unfairly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Not paranoid, the webs are special. They paralyze you. <laughs> 30 electric damage. And so the, the big uh, spider gets a little bit closer and she says, Now, now, uh, we've been told not to play with our food. <laughs> what are you doing? Wait, we're your food? It almost seems like she's joking a little, but then at the same time, you, you do feel a, a bit of a menacing uh, sense there and... Uh, but you know they don't really attack or anything they're just like oh well perhaps he could stay a while longer what well not if we're your food we don't want to stay for your food oh, we came I... here requesting some webs for crafting that is our purpose here well you know I think we could probably make a deal if you could entertain me I may be able to give you a little bit of my silk away. However, if you are unable to do so, ah, well, we might just have to find our own entertainment. And oh, how uh, my two little children love to play. And they're like, yeah! Woo-hoo. <laughs> they're all skittering around. Yeah! Well, Mary can think- dance a jig and see if that entertains them. Well, it's a little hard to dance in this position, but I, I think... I think he might have freed you because that was pretty good on strength. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry, that. I didn't. Yeah, that's uh, you can kind of jerk him free from the web, um, and he kind of sits with the plop, and then uh, and I'll say as you do, the the big spider kind of like moves its way around uh, to kind of block the way. And he's like, "You must not leave, please." Weren't you about to sing? Well, if you need entertainment. How about a little dance off? And oh, I will, a dance, uh, a dance! And she starts clapping multiple of her limbs together. It sounds like a like a crowd of people almost, but it's just a bunch of rustling limbs. Just do a little. Yeah, dance. I can get behind that. There you go. That's all right, Perrin will join in with you on the dance and yeah. give you the help action. Okay. Awesome. So that'll be a performance check with advantage. Oh, that would just be automatic. Oh, you thought it would be automatic. You just, you just thought it'd be automatic, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I'm just playing. Um, unfortunately, it's not, though. And a 10 is not quite enough. Uh, there's, she kind of like puts her hands down and she clucks. And she says, well, that's not a very good dance at all. Um, can't you do any better? And you better oh, be quick. Let me I try persuasion. Um, yes. Oh. Yes, you can. I have a flute. I'm pretty good okay. with it. Oh, nice, 21. So, I say now. I'm sure we can come to some other agreement. Perhaps we could find you some other things to eat, or... Oh, do you have some food on you? Uh, sure, I will see. I've got some rations. Yes. <gasps> oh, I think, well... She kind of like looks over at the the performers. Uh, it, it, your your words are like honey. They they make up for your friends. Uh, 
pitiful display there. Which it was actually pretty good, guys. It wasn't that bad. But she's a tough critic. So, I think we could do that. Let me clip a bit of my web for you, and um, I would be willing to trade a ration for that. Uh, here, I'll put the ration over here with our other snack. Uh, don't mind. The, uh, we just found that guy. Um, we definitely don't go around killing people or anything. Uh, we, you know, but, you know, if someone's just laying there dead, uh, why not, you know? Is there actually someone trapped? Um, now that she's kind of... They refer to it, now you can see as well. Yeah, now she's drawn attention to it. You can see that there's the dead body of, an, like, an elf man at the... Okay, and it's, and it's definitely dead, not, like... Okay. Yeah, he's definitely. Would you like, like, would you like, like us to get rid of that for you? Oh no, no. Um, it was. I'd consider it a bit of a gift of the forest. Uh, like I said, we don't like to harm others, but if it if it's there, you know, we don't let anything go to waste. <laughs> Fair enough, I guess. Why? Right? True, but he's getting a little bit past the uh, food phase. Oh, well, he's got a little juice left inside, uh, believe you me. And now here you go. She kind of comes back and hands you a bundle of uh, of spider silk. Well, I believe our business is com concluded, but you must come back and visit us again. Perhaps yeah. when we have some more uh, fresh food. I think we need to work on the answer again. We were for, prepared for the town that we could bring and get some more silk if we need it. She says, I really um, need Phoebe, see our friends out, and, and and do tell them goodbye. And then it's, like, uncomfortably as they start to kind of, like, crawl on you guys, but they're, like, ushering you a little bit. Okay. It's like, ooh, feels weird. Uh, but you found yourself uh, at the edge of their lair eventually, and um, you don't want to know what happened to that other guy in the end, but you feel like you've avoided the same fate, at least. And... Got what you wanted, so no worries. And uh, as you kind of come out, you look on the map and you see a little section uh, with kind of like a rough little outline of an antler shape, and then another one uh, with just like a little rough sketch of a tree. I want to go see if we can find a friendly uh, great elk. Perhaps they will be of a more amiable disposition than our previous beasts for it, that we encountered. Okay, so you kind of get the sense the antler would probably be for like the nut and the nuts and the bridge of the guitar. Um, you know, just the kind of material it is, but you, de you depart the, the darker area of the forest and you come across another clearing but this one is divided in halves by a stream. On the opposite side of the stream, you see a giant elk with giant, beautiful antlers, and he's grazing. All around him, you see a handful of smaller elk. Uh, should be able to just bop you guys. We're going to be on the same side of the map, but way far down below. So, bottom right corner of the map now, if you don't mind. And then I will reveal a little bit more for you. Parents in the middle of no, really. I usually much more sure footed than that. I'm just having an off day. Happens to the best of us. It turned out well in the end. Okay, so you see this little clearing um, seems to kind of maybe go back a little further. Uh, beyond your vision and then there's a little stream that kind of rolls through it and uh, they don't they don't notice you at first as you uh, first approach but then uh, a little twig may crunch nearby and and they all kind of turn to look at you uh, but they don't run they just look without moving um, a parent's gonna hold up his hands to show that he's not carrying any weapons a few of the smaller ones kind of go back to uh, to grazing. A couple of them still look pretty pretty nervous, but they seem to have came here for a drink mostly. And and uh, they, as you approach, they kind of have a, a very like nervous glance towards you, but they don't seem to be totally afraid or anything. Will do, will these ones be able to talk as well, or will one way to find out? Apologies, we don't mean to interrupt you. Um... Or maybe we speak. Uh, so, 
<laughs> you, he just might. Uh, yeah, he will definitely. But passive perception of 13 or higher. So it looks like Dadalyn and Perrin. Uh, before you ap- approach the elk, you notice that the hoof prints on the ground uh, lead to another clearing a little further upstream. It would be a little bit more this away. Okay, and then you approach him, and uh, he, like, raises his great head. Uh, and you definitely see those large, beautiful antlers that you need. But he kind of looks at you with a very intelligent eye, and uh, you realize that he is actually an animated elk. And um, at first he tries speaking to you in Sylvan. And does anybody understand that? Perrin does speak Sylvan. Mary can speaks speak Sylvan. Okay, so in, he... <laughs> He's, uh, he says, uh, we have visitors. Let me know if you do not understand me, but state your business. I spent many a year in the Feywild, and I am fluent with the ancient time. Well, I must say, thank you for not attacking on sight. You must not be hunters like some we have met before. No, uh, actually, um, what we are we're hoping to find is a uh, an antler or two. I was under the impression that you uh, may shed them yearly, and so we were hoping to find some that you might have cast off. Mm. You say you're not a hunter, but you do know of our kind. Um, very astute of you. We do shed our our antlers. Well, we used to treat this as a a bit of a cultural significance for our people we would come and drink daily from this stream and when the time came every year we would shed our antlers in the clearing beyond and you see that even now his his antlers are getting to the point where he's probably going to need to start getting ready to uh to to get him uh kind of cleared off and get ready for his next even more luxurious set and he's um my time will come again soon. However, we have ran into a bit of a problem. Perhaps we can uh, work some sort of exchange. Are you in need of assistance? Well, uh, I would be more than willing to let you venture into our, our shedding grounds and take what you may. However, we have been plagued recently by an unruly group of boars. They have made that clearing their home and refuse to let us in there. I see. Is there anything that precipitated this sudden change in their behavior? They seem to be an unruly group of youths and um, not quite as capable of thought as myself. Uh, Territorial beasts. For some reason they've claimed... I mean, this stream is wonderful, the... There are many creatures from all over the forest that come here to drink, and I believe they're trying to stake their claim. I see. Um, And you would like us to deal with them? At the very least... One way or another, they must be dealt with. Uh, We we try not to to wish death upon others, but they've killed our own, even, and... Whatever you must do to clear them. Uh, I, see, would... I think. Go I think ahead. this is a task we can handle, um, and he's going to turn back to everyone else and relay the conversation up this far. So the exchange this time is rather than actual good, we provide a service to them. Is that about right? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't seem like an unreasonable request, and I generally like to leave places I visit in a better state than when I found them. I don't be better this doesn't to me. Are we simply chasing them off or is this attempt to uh, I would like to avoid killing them if I can. I mean, the elk is amenable to killing them if it's absolutely necessary. Uh, but yeah, as like I said, I. I think there are other ways we may be able to deal with him. Okay, and so the the elk kind of moves aside as he uh, indicates the path back, and 
And then he also mentions that anytime we go in, it's only a, a matter of time before they they show up. Uh, your your approach is is up to you. But you guys can can move your tokens back here to the the square um, and place yourselves kind of anywhere you want up in in the clearing. Um, or before it, and then of course, if there's anything like spells or whatever that you'd actually want to do, or stealth or anything, you know, you're of course able to do anything like that. I could stand out and draw their attention while anyone who wishes to hide if they show desire. Uh, Perrin's going to step forward. He's not going to try to be particularly stealthy. He wants to draw their attention. Okay. And uh, does anybody else have anything they want to say before we... Oh, to be as possible, but that's not really a spell as with me, you know. Okay, so you guys, um, from... If any of the board's charges, I'll be prepared to breathe fire on you. Oh, shit. Oh, breathe. <laughs> oh, breathe acid. Like charge, nice. charge to attack and run up to us. You can get some roasted. Uh, breathe acid. Some good pork. So you guys go into the clearing, and you know it just sounds like some boars and stuff. Ooh, I don't know how that spider that spider followed Maricani back down. Ah! But uh, no, I'd ignore that, of course. But oh, go back home. You can't stay with us. <laughs> oh, come on, guys. You're but, a bitch. Uh, you guys aren't really trying to be quiet and you're definitely you're not really afraid or anything so you could just kind of go in there and chomp you may call a little bit or you may just wait but it doesn't take too long before uh out from the bushes and things all around you uh i think actually oh did oh my bad i think uh i think one of you might be on a boar hold on hey you're riding a boar Oh, yep, there it is. <laughs> you didn't even know it. Here, I'll move him up there. I was like, hey, wait, there's supposed to be one more of those. Okay, and so they definitely come out uh, pretty hostile um, with you guys. They come out they're just snorting and pawing at the ground, uh, the the loamy earth and the this rainforest type is just kind of being pulled up um, and they, they don't really speak uh, or anything so they're looking like they're ready to charge you guys could have a second to, to do whatever you might Perrin is going to um, Perrin would like to try one thing before we get into the combat um, he is going to cast speak with animals Okay. Um, and target whichever seems to be the alpha boar or the closest thing to it Okay, and so this one will kind of take a couple steps forward, and it's like uh, just steaming at the mouth and <laughs> and kind of pawing at the ground a little bit, but looks up at you as uh, you realize you can definitely communicate with it. We understand that you've been trying to claim this area for yourself. Oh, the, the best water's here. The best water means the the best targets too. Ha 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 ha. Yes, but all the uh, animals need to use this stream, not just the boars. Well, now they're going to know to fear us or to, to bring us some treats or something, or else we won't let them do it. Isn't that right, guys? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the tricky thing about fear is that it only works until something scarier comes along. Well, uh, as long as, you know, those those spiders stay in their webs and... Um, we're the top apex predators around here. Ain't that right, boys? Yeah, yeah. Apex predators. Yeah, I interject and have you translate. I'm sorry? I'd say, well, you're friends with some spiders, and if um, we go, they, they want to come down here. Uh, just for just for reference, because of the spell, um, it's only only, pa only Perrin can understand or speak with the. I think right we now. can understand what Perrin is saying at least, but we don't. Yeah, Perrin, you can. Perrin sounds like he's talking normally, but you know, I'm I'm assuming you're translating what they say back to us. I'm. Uh, yeah, he's know. passing along. I assume that you can translate what I say. To what would you like to say? 
Don't say no. Tell them that we, we have spiders. Love the spiders, and that if we offer them a nice deal, they might even run you out. So, do you really want to take that risk? Um. Yeah, Perrin's going to say, um, my friend was just telling me here, he thinks he's seen the spiders moving this way. In fact, they might be looking to set up a nest here. Uh, go ahead and roll me uh, Deception with advantage if you want. Oh, we'll definitely take advantage. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so he kind of trembles for a moment. And uh, go ahead and roll me an Insight real quick. Uh, so you can get the sense that this is like a young group of, uh, of hogs or boars that are, uh, you know, they're just coming to maturity and they, you know, they're not like vicious animals necessarily. And they just, they're getting a little unruly and trying to flex on the, uh, on the area like young boys will do in their teenage years, you know. And, uh, and then with your statement, you could see that it actually brings out a little more fear, uh, and he kind of comes over here, and you hear some like whisperings amongst them, and it's like, shh, shh, yeah, I know. Well, that one time we found Charlie, and he was sucked dry. Yeah, I know, man. Oh, we can't risk that again. Oh, dude, M- mom said I had to be back at eight thirty. Oh, oh, well, okay, maybe this isn't worth it after all. And then uh, he kind of steps back, and he's like, well, uh, we're we're gonna go. Um, we got another part of the stream we got to go check on, and uh, we're definitely not running home to our moms or anything. Your best defense is not to stay in one place for too long. Yeah, you know what? Or um, I might come find you and I will grin and have a bit of flame just burp from my mouth, but not like a full breath, just like a bit of fire. Oh! Is someone making bacon? Oh, uh. He's like, oh, well, this this spot sucks anyways. Um, all the crap from those elks kind of goes downstream, so, I mean whatever you can have it and they all just kind of oop, didn't mean to take you to there but yeah they all kind of just rush away uh scared and stuff and uh, you're able to check the area a little closer and you definitely see the telltale sign of uh shed horns from the antlers and um you can collect as many as you want we might as well have a decent number the best that we can find just to make sure that the... just to make sure that uh, Whichever one, whichever one the musical instrument maker finds best would be able to make the best instrument for our friend. It's a good idea. So you take a couple good looking ones, maybe a couple extra to choose, and uh, you realize that the elk has kind of came over at the end and. He's, he uh, he kind of chuckles. Uh, it's hard. The rumbling's hard to discern, but you realize it's laughter. He's, oh, 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 I knew they were just uh, unruly youth, but the problem with those types is it's just respect. And you know we're we're a pretty gentle type of uh, of beast over here, and I just couldn't get them to respect me. So I I really appreciate you guys kind of putting your paw down and uh, I mean whatever paw, your foot down there and and settling the matter for us. The hardest part of life is surviving long enough to get through adolescence. You know, it seems so odd that the, a short span of years would, would last with such importance for the rest of your life, but I guess it, we're all young once. Anyway, we were glad we were able to resolve this. And me too. Um, we'll finish up our business here and... And now I know I have somewhere safely to come and, and shed here in another month or two. So thank you kindly. And, you and guys thank you for the gift of horns. Mm-hmm. That you have one last location left. So without further ado, unless anybody has anything they want to throw out real quick. We will go to more of a forest area. And uh, of course, why are all these things in clearings? It's like uh, the people are purposely clearing out spaces for this stuff. It's strange. But you do find yourself in another clearing. Let's see if I can make... Oh, I'm going to take the elk. No. Nope. 
this time, though, you see a tree off in the distance. You can kind of arrange yourselves however you like. Parents, like, what do you think? Just an awakened elk or secretly a druid? It's a tree. (laughs) (laughs) It's a tree. (laughs) Oh. No, I like the original question though too. That's that's interesting. He did seem like he could have been a druid in disguise, just chilling with his people. You get bored of being on two legs after a while, you know. You got to mix it, it up. It's respectable to enjoy such a casual life. I suppose. Are we getting from yeah, get the We simply need the wood of this tree, I suppose. So, you, although you see the. Uh, Tree with gotcha. golden bark standing in the center. The last few rays of sunlight bounce brilliantly off the bark. And uh, you, you see like some shrubs and, and different things on the edge of the clearing. But it seems pretty quiet. I think one guy is going to go up to the tree. Well, given we've had to ask permission from everything we've walked to so far, I would not assume this is what it seems. And no one's here. It's just a tree. And uh, Maricani is going Something to... Something tells me that we cannot simply cut down this tree. Or at the very least, there might be consequences if we simply do so. We need the whole tree? I suppose we, we could cut off a branches. decently sized branch, yes. I don't exactly have the implement for this. Is this the kind of tree that sheds its bark at all? I'm not sure we would want the just the bark. Oh my bad, I was muted. You, you could see where you would uh, you could peel some of the bark off with enough force, or you could break off a branch to get enough. Uh, one of those things. You wouldn't have to necessarily chop the whole tree down, uh, but you'd have to collect it in one way or another. Mm-hmm. Mary, Mary kind of going to start peeling off some bark. Cutting off a decent sized branch. <laughs> oh, God. As you do, all of a sudden, these two big luminescent eyes open up in front of you and a mouth and it screams, Oh, God! Oh, fuck, that hurts! Ah! I'm so sorry. Oh, oh, boy, did that hurt. Oh, God, please stop! Please stop! <laughs> I'm going to try to put it back. Okay, here, here you go. Oh, God! Is that the better? I'm, I'm not a tree. I'm a tree. And, uh, you think you can just go up and peel off of any old tree, you see? Oh, my goodness. Yes. That's, been, that's been my experience. Yes. Oh, okay. Please don't attack me. Please don't attack me. Step away from my hands in the air, palms outward. Say, not attacking. Apologies. Okay, it's, uh, it's okay. You just scared me there. I was taking a nap. Uh, I didn't... I didn't, you know, I try to be quiet around newcomers anyways, but yeah, I didn't see y'all coming and ah, man, that hurts, that stings um what's, you're not going to cut me down, are you? Uh, no. We actually thought about it but I don't think we're going to cut you down now because well, you're a tree ant Oh, thank goodness, man oh, I gotta tell you, it's been rough for me ever since I settled down in this little clearing Well, it does make you the center of attention well, it's, I mean, it's, this place is wonderful. You see him kind of... I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, he's just saying, there's a good number of feet between you and any other tree, but I suppose there is a good amount of sunlight. That's the thing, you know. I, you know, there'll be time for another tree in my life one day, but for now, I'm just trying to get to be the biggest tree and I could be before I'm looking for a lover. You know what I'm saying, brother? But uh, that's what that's what led me to be here is the soil and the sunlight streaming down through the trees. I mean, this is the spot, dude. And if there are any lady trees going to come around here, you know, it's going to be right here. But like I said, man, I'm having some issues. It's the squirrels. Squirrels. Yeah, man, they're always messing with me. One time I took a nap, and I woke up, and they were crawling all over me. They were in my branches, chittering and chattering and laughing. It freaked me out. And look, I can get up if I want to. And he kind of like stretches back, and you see a couple like long roots kind of start to tear through the ground a little bit before he kind of falls back and settles in the earth. He's like, but I don't want to, man. I got to stay here. This is the spot to make me as big and beautiful, tall, dark, and handsome, baby. You know what I'm talking about. I got to stay here. 
But those swirls. I can see. So, so if you were to aid with those squirrels, you would owe us a favor then. Well, you know, in the Feywild, a, a favor is a pretty hefty thing to owe, and uh, yeah, yeah, I think I think that would call for me owing you a favor. Are those squirrels among you now, or is there another location they reside in? His, it almost sounds, or it, it seems like a wind is blowing through his limbs, but you realize he's actually like trimmering a little in fear. He's like, man, everywhere I look, I see their eyes. They're just outside of the vision, and they're chittering and laughing at me, and then they'll rush out at me, and I'll be batting at them as much as I can, and then they just laugh and run. It's, gosh, I, I'm not going to be able to grow another inch with all this stress. It's, ah. Oh. But, well, I know a way to get rid of them, but I think I'll let somebody else to try something if they want well i think i might know uh they they, they seem to be coming through a certain point uh, i haven't really pulled myself up from this spot to look for it but um you know um if i owed you a favor uh, what would you what would you want from a simple tree like me uh well, we actually a friend a... of ours is currently in the interest of making a musical instrument to find their own means of love. Would you be willing to help them in their quest for love as well as you finding your own? Uh, uh, now that, that does sound like something I could get behind. Um, and you know, I can, it, it does hurt a little, but uh, you, it looks like you already got most of the job done. Um... Uh, don't worry, I'll I'll heal up okay. But I could probably let you take a little of that bark you peeled off if uh, if you if you help me with these squirrels. And don't worry, man. He like smack a little like twig smacks up against his, what would be his chest. He's like, this is the finest wood in all the forest, bruh. If need be, I could provide a healing potion should you need quicker recovery for you any injuries. Oh, you know that's. That's awfully kind of you, but I grow stronger if I get my energy from the earth, and it, it takes longer, but it's it's worth it. Feels good too. So, where's the spot that they're coming through? Well, that's what I was thinking, man. Maybe y'all could kind of help me find that. Is that I thought every time I think I've got it figured out, they'll just be in a different part of the clearing, and uh, there's there'll be more than one of them for sure. There seems to be swarms of them, and it's hard to keep my eyes on him, uh, but if you know, you got some legs to walk around on, and if anybody wants to, you can make an investigation check. Yes, it seems like we will want to. I will help whoever is wishing to do it, and I will have an extra pair of eyes looking out. But yes, it seems like looking for a trail would be of the best to be what we're looking for in this case. So. Uh, if anyone's better at investigation, let me know, because I am not good. <laughs> well, parents crack. Give help to somebody else an advantage and an extra pair of eyes looking with them. Anyone better than a minus one? I just have a plus zero. I can see we are not the most intelligent group. Well, can you give it a shot with a, with advantage, you say? Yeah, I'll give you help. All an right. extra uh, to help you. There you go. <laughs> Okay, and uh, how about... Oh, no. Let's see, so one person, or Perrin, do you just want to do a roll? Because you didn't help, did you? It's actually DC 15, so who knows, maybe you can make it, maybe. Okay. <laughs> so you guys are looking no? around, but it's hard to figure it out. I mean, there's a lot of little kind of trails and pathways that kind of go off of this clearing. Um, and to you guys, a lot of this does seem to look a lot of the same you know if the left from right is kind of identical it's just a bunch of luscious trees and plants and you know maybe if you spend a lot more oh, time may i use inspiration to try again sure i'll help oh no you already have actually if you're willing would you let Perrin use survival to try and follow the tracks uh since we already did roll through it how about uh samael you can do your your inspiration and then we'll just leave it at that so, okay okay never mind and so <laughs> One thing you do discover, though, as you're you're peering around, is you hear the chittering and the chattering. It almost sounds like mocking laughter as you realize that uh, they are approaching um, with the intent to harass. And um, so, if if you guys, 
I mean, I know you're capable to do so. So if you want to try to communicate first, uh, you could. Otherwise, yeah. we'll just launch into a, an initiative as they kind of bust out of this little secret uh, tunnel that they have kind of in the trees. I got a trick up my sleeve, but I would like to resolve this peacefully if we can. Okay. So well, any, let's, let's try. Um, you realize that there was a little secret here. And uh, as you guys were kind of peering around, um, you weren't able to get the jump on him, unfortunately, um, and, and see him coming. So they kind of come around here all secretively, and they start to funnel out, and they <laughs> they all kind of spread out. As uh, Each squirrel here actually would represent a swarm, so there's a, just a bunch of them as they all come filing out of here. And... Uh, the tree screams, Oh no, they're back! Oh, they're gonna try to get in my branches again! Um, uh, Perrin's gonna pick one and try and talk, or cast a, speak with animals and try to talk to it. Okay, and so, uh, you immediately hear, like, ah, yeah, let's get him! Ah, maybe he'll cry this time, it's so funny! Come on, it's not nice to make people cry. Yeah, but uh, last time, uh, Buckwheat over there, he made it to the top of the tree in 0.4 seconds, and that's a new record. <laughs> yeah, he's the champ. <laughs> yeah, but he's, this is the only tree, and it's not even the tallest. Yeah, but it's the only one that doesn't want us on him. It's so funny. <laughs> yeah. Watch, I'm going to go all the way to the top. Ah! He starts, like, diving towards him. He's like, no, 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 make him stop. I'm going to. All right. Um... Aaron, do we have permission to chase them off, so to speak? Uh, let me try one last thing. Um, and he is going to pull out his pipe. I'm holding tablet ready to chuck it. Oh. <laughs> uh, Perrin's going to pull out his pipes of haunting and start playing. Okay. Uh, excludes the party and the tree yet, but all the squirrels are going to get it. Okay. So they, do they have to make a save? They do. Uh, DC 15 wisdom. Mm. Didn't you know that uh, squirrels are the most wise oh, no, creatures? But yeah, I mean, they seemed super wise when he was talking to them. I mean, of all those social stats or mental stats for animals to have, they usually have best of wisdom compared to intelligence or charisma. Yeah, but I can't pick the save. So I had yeah. Two, I had three fails, two successes. Okay. Well, at least maybe for task easier. And so they're frightened? <laughs> yep. <laughs> And yeah, I think they can try to roll again if they, at the end of their turn. Uh, double check. Uh, yes, repeats the saving throw at the end of each of his turns. Okay. And uh, and funny enough, you actually got the one too that was dive bombing towards the tree. So he like starts to scramble up the trunk as the, the tree and is just like screaming bloody murder. He's like, oh, I don't like it! And, uh, and but all of a sudden with the, the tune the the squirrel just stops and like plops to the ground with like a thud and it's like huh oh crap oh! and uh and starts to like scramble back towards his friends over here and they're like oh i don't, I don't know anymore uh the, the wind's whistling through his branches real weird like and then these guys kind of come up they're like huh huh and then he turns back he's like but but buckwheat you're the champ bro you're gonna let your oh man what are we gonna do are we doing initiative, or can I do something, I guess? You can do something. It says, you shall not pass. Yeah, I'm I mean... going to breathe a three-foot line, five-foot wide line of fire, just right above their heads, and growl fiercely. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead and roll me an intimidation. And, uh, alone. So as, as parents... Yep, yeah, give me that intimidation. And as Perrin's kind of uh, filling the, the air with that sweet, bittersweet, melancholy melody, um, go ahead and take advantage on that. Oh, yep, okay, always roll advantage. Yeah, nice. advantage. Oh. 22. 
Intimidation. Okay, and so these the squirrels all kind of just stop and they oh 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 whoa he's got friends now we gotta scram y'all uh, we're gonna find another game to play and they all kind of just like take off back into the trees oh no buckwheat you're a pansy no you are you ran first ah let's go mess with the spiders again ah! <laughs> bunch of miscreant youths in this forest. Uh, but you turn back towards uh, the treant, and he says, "Oh, oh my God! Uh, oh, thank you so much." That's like he like you see him like pinch himself with the twig. He's like, "Oh, okay, no, I thought that was a nightmare, man. Those guys are y'all are really brave." Uh, whew. Well, um, as I promised, you can you can keep those little trimmings you, you got from me, and yeah, you know, no hard feelings. I understand. Uh, it's, it's hard to ignore a tree as beautiful as this. But hey, you are you, very impressive. Yes, hey, majestic. Hey, they don't call me Trent the Treant for nothing. And hey, you know where I'm at. You want to come by? You know, <laughs> shoot the sap. We could do that anytime you want. Yeah, you, know, you just come by, see me, let me know. I'll be here. You wouldn't have to have any. You wouldn't have to have any loose branches or twigs. You could shake off for us, perhaps. A bit of well, extra would go in our in case we need a bit of extra. I, I think what you have there will probably have to do it. I mean, uh, you know, I wanted to be strong, but it it did hurt a little bit. Um, but that that looks like a pretty good amount. Um, what are y'all gonna be making with that? You said something to earn some love. That sounds pretty weird. Uh, it's not what I think it is, is it? Uh, you haven't heard of uh, one of the in Bar- No, not is it? It's not Barovia. That's the other place. Nope, close though. Bar- uh, Barangay. Yep. I don't suppose you've heard of Barangay. There is oh. one man. There is one rabbit there that makes rather good musical instruments. You know, it's funny you say heard of it. It's more like hear it. Uh, yeah, those tunes will be drifting all the way here sometimes, and they they are pretty cool. Uh, you know, not really my type of folk with with all their buildings and stuff. I prefer the the grass and and you know for my company, but. Yeah, you know, if if that's what they got to do, as long as they're not chopping me and my kin down, um, maybe we could come up with some sort of agreement eventually so we could do it more peacefully. <laughs> well, let me know if y'all ever come roll them back through. I'll be here. And uh, you guys are here done collecting the stuff. So it's time to come back to the workshop and uh, and Barangay. And so, real quick, I will grab you and move you on down here to the middle of the map. Which uh, I'll just reveal in a second. Um, uh, as you guys return to the workshop, uh, you see that while well, Jacinto he's uh, got his voice lubed up and ready unfortunately ricardo the luthier his hand is starting to swell up pretty badly from when he whacked it with the hammer earlier and so as you guys enter the place you see him there kind of with the bandage on his hand and uh he's he's trying to work on another instrument but as he sees you come in he looks up and says oh wonderful you're back justin ah oh and he's kind of grips his hand ah uh, do you want to make uh, anyone can make a medicine check if they like? That looks mighty fierce, friend. Do you need some aid with it? I got a four. Ooh. Oh, there you go, Americani. So you can see that uh, he's given himself a level of exhaustion, essentially, uh, by hurting his hand, and um, he kind of sees you looking at it, and he says, "I know, I know, it's." gonna be a problem uh i see you got the the ingredients i needed there that's that's wonderful but i'm gonna need a little time off with my thumb now Uh, well the only thing is if i make the guitar now i know i'm gonna mess it up and the, the things that they gotta not just play well but they gotta look beautiful my name is stamped on these creations and if if it's not as good as it can be then I, then I just don't know if it'll work out. Um, Jacinto kind of comes up and he's like, well, oh no, uh, 
well, what can we do? Um, I, I'm not going to be able to do that. If I, if I busy my hands with that, I, I might even hurt myself and, and won't be able to play later. Well, we can certainly try and be your hands. Oh, goodness. Would, would you do that for Ricardo? He can tell you what to do. Hmm. I can try my best, but I don't suppose there is any way we can help your hands either. Ah, well, it's, it probably would be best if I just, just let it rest. You know, it's, sometimes it's best not to rush these things, even with, with magic. Then you end up with a, a crooked finger, you know? Um, but I gotta say, it's, it's not that complicated, especially if, if any of you are, are proficient in any tools of sorts. No, I'm not. Well, no matter, no matter. I think, uh. I think you could probably probably do it with my instruction. Um, it'll it'll take a few few different things though. Uh, looks like wow, that's that's pretty funny. There's four of you and about four pieces to put together here. Uh, well, I guess three, and then one person will probably want to do the final tune up on the strings when it's done. Ah, uh, well, uh, I suppose we should get started though. I, I know Donia is already uh, being serenaded by all the Haranadors in town. Uh, we don't want Jacinto to miss out. So the first part is, uh, you got that wood there, right? Yeah. Well, that's going to be our main part of the guitar. Um, if you know right. how to use some carpenter's tools, that could awfully help you, but uh, either way, we're going to we're gonna need to kind of shape that and, and get it all glued together and nailed together in pieces. Um, so who who would want to give a shot at that? It's 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 mostly a, a strength thing. You got to be tough to to get started with the Again. wood. Again, I am a strong individual. If and, oh, uh, go ahead. you know, I don't want someone, I don't want someone to volunteer now and miss out on something they might be better on. So let me let me just give a quick explanation of the process. Uh, first, we'll have to build the guitar body uh, using some strength, some carpenter's tools. After that, we'll need to install the frets. Um, looks like if you know how to use some wood carver's tools, that'll help you a lot, but that'll be uh, mostly dexterity based. And then uh, the last little piece of getting it together will be a little bit more of that uh, finesse uh, or dexterity, if you will, but with uh, some wood carver's tools, again, it would help. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's how you can carve the antler pieces into the, the bridge and the nut shapes that we need. Uh, then of course, last thing would be just a simple little performance to try to tune up the guitar and uh, we'll be all good to go so uh, you can kind of discuss amongst yourselves to see who would be best at what and then we'll get started um my main contributor my main contribution here would be probably with the first step all right mary kenny will attempt to handle the second step then uh you have anything better than a minus one in Anything besides, so I have minus one and everything besides strength. So, you have like a twenty strength because I have an eighteen strength. Fair enough. I'm at fair enough. On I do have a. I mean, I can do charisma if I have to. I have plus one to it. I'm saying like I'm minus one death, and I'm performance is. <laughs> I am plus three performance. I could try. Oh, well, yeah, you, that should, that would probably be good for your step, and maybe parent can Ooh, do the other last thirty plus four. I'm guessing you may be good with dexterity, parent. Yeah, parent's a sixteen dex. All right, then I will do strength. Okay, so sounds like we got about got it figured out. And uh, Ricardo, he kind of hears you guys uh, discussing your skills and things, and he says, "Ah, don't don't be too nervous. I don't want to put too much pressure on y'all. It's just that, like I said, you know, my name's going to be stamped on the guitar, and so uh, I'll put it this way: if you could do a good job and you represent me well, then I'll throw some coin in there for it uh, for you for doing that. Uh, but if if not, it'll still play just fine, uh, but it just won't look so great. And uh, you know, I." I just consider some extra gold, some incentive for doing a good job, Bob. And, you know, just have fun with it. That's the most important thing about building guitars and lutes and harps and, oh, goodness, I could go on all day. Just don't ever ask me to make a piano. Ugh, terrible. So many strokes. 
But uh, anyways, as you guys, uh, he kind of guides you over to where there's some tools used to like shape out wood and and uh, some glue and some nails and things. He says, "Well, uh, who's your uh, who's the beefiest of one of you? Who's got it in him?" And he tries to hand off a hammer. Uh, I will be starting off with this then. Okay, so just go ahead and give me a strength check. <laughs> All right, just strength. So just, just a straight strength check, and then if oh, you if I always just go to with the advantage. Just choose the left one, but left one is twenty two. Nice. 18 of course, if you have uh, carpenter's tools, you could add that proficiency. But uh, uh, no, it looks like you're good anyway. So you know you you kind of got the tongue out, tongue sticking out of your mouth a little in concentration, and uh, you almost bop your thumb a couple times as uh, you hear like a oh careful uh, oh as you know he just did that to himself, but. Uh, with his guidance, he's like, no, no, not like that. You know, glue it like this. Now hold it tight. Hold it tight. Now that glue will set. All right. Good job. Good job. And uh, you realize that you did a fantastic job uh, bu- building the guitar body. He says, wow, uh, we may make a luthier out of you yet. Good job. <laughs> Thank you for your guidance. I suppose if I am around here for a while longer and there's no dangerous tasks that need to be done, perhaps I would be able to contribute here. That would be wonderful. That would be wonderful. I could teach you everything I know. But for now, let's see if we can uh, get these frets installed. So we got to know what note we're playing on this guitar. And without the frets, it's just going to sound like a big old blah, blah, blah mess. Okay. Um, so who's up for it? If you got some wood carving tools, that could help you. Otherwise, we'll have a just a, just a dex check. So just to double check, Parent is the only dex-based character in the group. <laughs> Americani. I think we have Americani is also contributing to Dex. Okay. Oof. I guess we have inspiration if we want to use it now, but Oh, yes. That's true. I think only one's been used. I would love to. I would yeah. love to use inspiration. Beautiful. Okay. Well, there you go. Another Sorry. 22. So we got two inspirations on the board still if, if they're needed. But you uh you you need a little bit of guidance uh and you even start to do it a little bit wrong at first, but he says, "Whoa, whoa, just hold up. Hold up. Stop, stop, stop." now look look and he kind of like goes over and he does like the ghost thing where he like wraps his little self uncomfortably around you and starts to <laughs> that's just playing but he's like, like, like this moving your hand uh, <laughs> I'm gonna say wait are you the one that sent me I'm gonna look up you the one that sent me the note <laughs> he's like this is just the easiest way to teach you he's like, like I'm too uncomfortably close behind you oh sorry sorry I re- my bad uh <laughs> Didn't realize I was uh, yeah. being a little awkward there, but yeah, just do it like that and you'll be just fine. And uh, with his uh, well-placed guidance, you were able to place the frets perfectly and uh, it's going to allow Jacinto tra- to traverse the fretboard without hurting his little hands. Um, so you Beautiful. did a perfect job. Jacinto says, wow, this is really looking great so far, guys. I, I think I could really do this. Now, well, all we got to do is carve those antlers. Um... And then we got to tune it up. So let's let's keep it going. Uh, two more. Who wants to uh, carve the antlers? All right, I think this is Parent. Okay, so that'll be a dex check. And if you got them wood carver's tools, I like the, uh, this is like the only time being tool proficient is like, damn, that's pretty good. Okay. No, sorry, he grew up in the Feywild. They didn't have a lot of the time for crafts. Okay, and so as you go to, to shave them down, um, you're going, you're going, and they're looking really good, and uh, and Ricardo's kind of like looking over, and he's like, you're doing a fine job, and then he starts to turn to the rest of them, and he's like, well, the, the best thing about making guitars is just taking your time and being patient, and most of all, not overdoing it, especially with the antlers. If you make them too small, then they won't fit quite right and then he looks back over to see that you've just been like shaving and shaving and shaving away oh, oh stop stop uh th- those will work but it's uh it's that that's good that's good and uh you realize you you ended up uh just overdoing it a little bit on that one i suppose we do have some spare antlers i don't suppose we can we may be in a hurry i suppose but we could try again i don't know if that's if we're allowed to do that because we got extras but well, oh, you did. You got some extras there. Well, that's that was really smart of you. Uh, perhaps, perhaps you could get another try at it then. There, uh, don't feel too bad. Uh, maybe we can get a better set. Uh, 
And then uh, if if you Perrin, you could do it if you wanted to, or if you wanted somebody else, I suppose. Or I mean, oh, I'll give it a try. Yeah, it's your it's your beautiful. Hey, that is better. There we go. Heck yeah. And uh, so <laughs> Dadalyn, right? Or no, that was Marikani, right? You you pull up the other. Uh, my bad if I'm confusing y'all. But you pull out the other uh, the antlers and you're like, hey, wait, we had these. And then, uh, yeah, this time he kind of like keeps a keen eye on you, Perrin, Ricardo does, but he doesn't say anything. He just lets you do your thing and he's ready to step in if needed. But at a certain point, you kind of stop and you look up at him and he nods and uh, you know you, you did a good job and this time you stop just in time. And as you guys step back, you see... It's pretty small, but other than that, it is a beautifully put together guitar. I mean, from the, you know, the top all the way to the bottom, it's just made excellently. He says, "Wow, I, I really couldn't have done that better myself." Uh, I'm not gonna lie; I was a little nervous and trusting y'all with this, but you did a really good job. Well, I guess there's nothing left to do now but tune it up, and then he can go off and sing his song. So. Well, who's who's the performer of the bunch? Ouch, I got ten. I suppose we could use the third inspiration to see if we can get better, perhaps. So sure. if, if you already used yours, then someone else could give it to give it to you, Samael. Thank you, I will try. So we got we got one of y'all has one left. <laughs> Usually I'll keep some little X's, but I forgot. Well, it's 10, hopefully. Okay. So as you start to uh, play out a little ditty, you you get it as close as you can, but every so often uh, there's just like a, a chord that sounds a bit off. And, uh, and you keep trying to pluck the different strings to figure out which one it is that's like kind of throwing them off, uh, but you're just like unable to do so. And, and after a few minutes... Uh, Jacinto's like, well, I, I think it's about as good as it's going to get. I mean, I can work with that. And uh, I, I think it's about time for us to go, guys. Um, we got to go to the square. Yes. And it so would, uh, it Ricardo, wouldn't do to do all this work and not be able to make use of it. I'm going to be Stay a away. star. Ricardo, Stay away from the C minor. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, right before you go, though, Ricardo comes up and he says, Ah, you know what? Three out of four is not bad, gentlemen. And that's actually uh, all you needed to do to impress me as much as you can. Uh, we're not, nobody's perfect, you know, so I'm not complaining. He's going to, he's really going to kill it out there. So here, I want to give you guys this for me. And he, uh, he hands you guys the max so, uh, for this little encounter, actually. So good job. Um, he gives you 100 gold. Each, I guess. Oh, no, no. Just for now, just 100 gold. And then, uh, okay. uh, yeah. 25 each. Yeah, not too bad. All right. And so, hey, is this our makers rich? Hey, it costs like 50 gold to make a loot, and this is a, probably a pretty... This is like handcrafted, so it might even be fake. That's a nice little penny. But uh, Jacinto, he says, well, come on, guys, uh, hop along. We're going to be late. And he leads you guys to a, a more cobblestone plaza. Uh, it takes up the center of Barangay. And the first thing you see, can't take your eyes off of her hardly, is up on a balcony of a two-story villa, you see Doña Lea herself, half-elf beauty. Um, she has kind of uh, duskier, darker skin, but with uh, raven black hair, uh, very beautiful features. And she kind of has a, a pleasant look on her face as she watches a, a string of performers um, trying to impress her, but it seems like they all fail and they all kind of walk away a little bit dejected. Uh, you see Jacinto by your side and he's, oh, oh no, uh, that, their songs were pretty good too. And if they couldn't do it, I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to. Don't be them. You be you. Yeah, you're right. You're right. And uh, he kind of starts to motion you guys towards the uh, plaza uh, center. And the performers kind of walk by with uh, with glum looks on their faces. And you kind of overhear a couple of them. The one guy's like, I practiced for 10 days for this moment. And she didn't even give me a second look. Uh, another one says, did, did she even hear me? 
says another. Uh, Jacinto kind of turns towards you guys once more, and he's like, uh, guys, uh, I'm a little nervous. Do you think you could help me out one once more? Sure. I'm quite invested in this potential victory. Whatever would you need, or what would you want our help with? Well, I'm... How may we aid you? I'm a little bit unsure now, uh... But I don't know what I should sing. Um, I know a few different songs, but... I was working on a couple, but now I just feel like they're not going to be good enough. And uh, I should have done my research. Maybe there's some way that you could kind of mix in with the, the people here and and find out something that could help me decide what to sing. I I know a few songs, um, but I just don't know which one will please Donya. Mm. Well, we can certainly listen out a bit. All right, so I'm Might going to... something that would help particularly in this circumstance. I'll have to see if I am able to, though. Okay, so you're in a square here, and uh, it's more just for like role play or flavor, but uh, you could go up to any of these townsfolk and, and kind of talk to them, and it'll just be a check, really. But uh, just to set the scene a little bit, the, the cobblestone underneath your feet, it kind of extends uh, all throughout the plaza, um, and it's ringed by the buildings you see there. They all seem to be wood with a few fancier than others, especially the Doña Lea's villa over here. Uh, which is quite grandiose. Um, just a little background about her. This is like her vacation home of sorts, where she actually has a, a bit of a... I don't know if I'd describe it as a castle, but more of a keep up in a, a mountain some distance from here. Um, but she comes down here to, to sample the the musicians and try to invite some back to perform at her actual uh, king... you know, her hall, as it were. But... This is what she's doing now, listening from above. And uh, you guys kind of see the onlookers watch quietly while a singer fails to impress the archfey. Um, you kind of hear the whispers around you as they discuss it, and, uh, and lanterns burn while the moon is starting to shine up ahead. Um, so you guys can roll an investigation or persuasion check if you want to ask around for advice. And uh, each one, each one of you can do it. Hmm. So, how are they up in, I guess, the bell tower, or they're just in front of their villa, I suppose. So Donya would be up here by the the villa. Uh, yeah, maybe she'd be up in the bell tower next door or something. Uh, and then the the rest of the people are just kind of all spread about. You know, you can see some token or little, you know, little people there. You can kind of move up and and kind of ask each one. Uh, you know, or investigate, or, or however. I see. Is there? I think we have three rolls so far. I think just Dad. Dadalyn. Um. So you can do persuasion yeah, I can or make investigation. A, I'll make. I was. I can make a persuasion roll as well. Yeah. Let's see. Everyone seems. Well, everyone either rolled well or is good at persuasion. I got a five. There was something else I was possibly considering doing as well. Okay. But. Um, so there's not like a real success or fail here too much though so don't feel too bad but it will kind of change the conversation in a way which is interesting but um, we'll start from the top so Samael with the 8 of persuasion uh, you, you kind of come across a, a passerby and uh, you know you may just ask them like what kind of songs uh, does Donya Leia like and uh, you see that this is a performer and he's he looks a little bit irked. You can assume that he's probably been rejected, but he looks at you and he's like, Ugh, "Yeah, what are you gonna try to sing to?" Um, well, if you ask me, I think she loves love songs. And you just yeah, just go sing her a love song. She loves them. And then uh, go ahead and roll me an insight check with that. You, Samael really thinks that. Donya Leia loves love songs. Love songs are the best, okay. Okay, so that's what you've discovered uh, from your time around, that she loves love songs. And so uh, for the next one, let's go to Perrin with the nine. Um, you end up coming across someone 
And uh, you may ask, like, again, you're all kind of just going around saying, like, what kind of things is Donia like? Or how? what's the best, uh, or like, what you know, what's the best pool on this? What should I do to, to please her? And they'll kind of tell you different things, of course. But the information that you get here, Perrin, uh, an, an older lady, she says, ah, well, um, I came here with Donia on the, the very first day, way back in, you know, it feels like forever. But, uh, you know, from what I understand, uh she she designed this and what was it i think it was uh in in honor of of her father um something like that so uh, yeah it, it's kind of a weird thing um i think her her dad was the human from water deep but yeah i don't know I, that's what i remember and so uh, go ahead and make an insight check you uh you really can't see if you know if she's remembering correctly or not it, it's what it seems to be is that uh that that donia would have created a lot of this of berengay and and Maycanta and the image of uh, the land of her father is what she says and now let's go on to the next one with the 15 from marikani i mean it looks like water deep as far as parent can tell and uh, so marikani uh you he, you see a little pixie that's uh that's singing a song and it's in uh, sylvan so she's singing in sylvan and as you approach she says oh um, yes this is uh this is the song i was preparing May maybe i'll come back next year and try it i'm still working on it but i think donio really like it uh you know, she really loves hearing songs in Sylvan, um, so that's that's what I'm trying to do is is write this song. Uh, and so that gives you a little tip there that uh, that she she loves that Sylvan, and no insight needed or anything on that. Um, she seemed you you can draw that conclusion is pretty well. But last but certainly not least, uh, Dadalyn. Mm, go ahead and roll me an insight. Oh, off the bat, all right. Wait, where did... Okay, here it is. Oh, no, not much. Oh, all these terrible tables. <laughs> yeah, and so you were... You're hearing uh, a lot of the same things as your friends, um, and you're not really seeing through it. Um, I was going to give you the chance to kind of undo one of the other ones, perhaps. Um, well, there is one thing I had in mind that I don't know if I rolled really low inside, so maybe I wouldn't consider doing it, but I was considering I had, I mean, I don't know what will happen, but I have a scroll of detect thoughts. And so Dadan was considering just getting close enough to um, Donya and seeing what they're thinking themselves. So, are you able to? Are you able to cast that spell? Um, I'm a fighter, so I don't believe so. But I have the spell scroll. So it, it would have to be one of your friends. Yeah. If... Oh, I can't cast it myself. Um... Yeah, it has to be in your class uh, spell list, which for a fighter that's going to be a pretty small list or non-existent. But if you have another par party member who has it. <sighs> has detect thoughts on their spell list they could cast okay. it um uh, bard sorcerer or wizard oh shoot that's not me so if some oh it has to be a bard sorcerer or wizard or a great old one warlock okay so nobody here can can cast it oops Sorry, not a lot of casters in this group. Hey, it's okay. Um, all right, so I don't want to just uh, throw you out with one. So uh, just go ahead and give me a perception check, uh, Dadalyn, just to, to end it up. Hey, our Herringon friend, how good of a bard are you? <laughs> Can you do this yourself? <laughs> Let me see. Shoot, yes, he can. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Turns out he can. So this will... Uh, this will take your spell scroll, so you'll have to mark on your sheet that it's gone. 
I yep, that's fine. Back. But I, well, I guess I'll just see if he wants to first. But I, I, rolled, guess that I went ahead and ro I just rolled. Me. I was just gonna roll a 50-50 chance to see if he could do it, and it, it rolled high, so that's a, a yes to me. So he's kind of like, well, uh, you know, I'm still learning uh, you... my, my abilities, but oh, this kind of lays out how to do it. I, I'm pretty sure if I just follow the instructions here, I could probably figure it out. If you really want to try to, I'm willing to. I can't use this myself, obviously, so I wouldn't mind if you make put this to good use. It's better than me having it, so. If you want to just ease on a bit closely and sort of just get a surface idea of what she's thinking might, maybe you'll pick up on what sort of kind of music she might be interested in. So is there any way that they could, de like, detect thoughts could be detected by the person? Um, well, if they're really good and powerful, then maybe. Otherwise, if it's only their surface thoughts, you can read it without them. Um, Unless, yeah. they, unless they are really powerful. And you said they're an archway, so who knows how this will go. Yeah, they only have to make a saving throw if he tries to like, like probe. probe deeper. Into okay. a, probe like, deeper and like... Go after specific information. Like, go after something that's not just surface thoughts. Like, I'm going to look into your memories and I like, looked at one of your memories or something like that. Okay, so he kind of trots off and then you see his eyes kind of glaze over for a minute and his body like goes stock still as, uh, as the spell scroll like crumbles to dust in his hands as he realizes uh, he casts the spell. And then he kind of trots back over and he seems a little more determined. And he's like, well, uh, I, I think um, I think I got a little bit of a tip there. Um, oh man, it's on the tip of my brain, but she was humming a song in her mind. Uh, but I, I haven't heard anybody play that song, and it's weird. It's, it's kind of an old one, but uh, man, maybe with a little help, I could remember all the pieces to it. And so, as we are kind of approaching the the magic moment, um, Jacinto comes up and he's like, "Well, it's it's time to decide. Uh, what what did you guys learn about uh, what she may like? And then I can kind of tell you what I figured out, and maybe we can find out what song." I think there's something in Sylvan. She told me she loves love songs, and what I think. So she loves love songs. She likes songs in Sylvan. Anything else? Uh, something about her dad, who may have been from Waterdeep. Okay, something about her. That's kind of weird. Uh, yeah, it came from a very old lady. So she... Something about her dad, and... Okay, let me see. So Sylvan, I, I know three songs in Sylvan, and actually, it's kind of funny, but one of them is a love song. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's called, he says a, a name in Sylvan, which is like, Love You to the End, or something like that. Uh, Dahil Saio, yeah, that song. Um, that's, you know, it's, it's not the most popular in town, but if she likes love songs, that one would probably go over pretty well. But uh, Totally, she would love it. Well, I know two other songs, too. Um, one of them is kind of about uh, a homeland, and, and the other one is is kind of it's kind of a little funny, but it's, uh, it's just like some, someone wrote a song about their mother, <laughs> missing their mother or something. But uh, so let's see. Let's put our clues together, and, and let's see which one I should sing. Um, the love song, that sounds pretty good, and they're all going to be in Sylvan, so that, that works. And then the, well, you did say something about a father, um, so I don't know. Well, maybe, maybe they meant just a parent. You're right. I sort of heard, I, I already heard the things that those other two had suggested, so I don't have anything new to contribute, but. Yeah, you don't know a song in Sylvan about her mother. So maybe just one about her, sorry, her father. So maybe just one about her mother will work. If you already know those those three songs, perhaps if you hum maybe the main chorus or the most popular part of it, maybe it might match up with what you heard her thinking of. You know, the, the song about the, uh, the mom, you know, that does kind of match a little bit with what I had, what the, you know, is... I feel like it's like I woke up from a dream and you're trying to hold the thoughts in your hand like water. That's how I heard the melody. It was, it was like more of an impression, but um, I know one song. Uh, go ahead and uh, one of you can make me 
a persuasion check, uh, just a straight persuasion check, and, and we'll see. And yeah, we'll Eric's pretty good at it. Oh, and oh, or well, I guess. I guess we'll make it a group check then. If the other two want to throw in, and we'll see. Oh uh, yeah. No, it's okay. I, I mean, persuasion. Uh, sixteen. So based off of everything y'all have learned, y'all are going to try to persuade him to make the right decision. And so here's what he ends up coming up with. All right, guys. Okay, okay. I hear y'all. I hear y'all. I know it's it's kind of conflicting here. Um, not, not everything makes sense, but I, here's what I'll do. I'll sing, I'll sing the song I think I should, but I'm gonna change some of the words to to make it sound a little bit more like a love song, and then I think she'll really like that. So, thank you guys for your help. Uh, I think that's really gonna help me with what I need to do. Um, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to take advantage of you guys too much, but. You know, I, I could use a little bit of uh, backup instruments. I don't know if any of you guys play. Oh, yes. Parent pulls out his pipes. <laughs> oh, cool. Yes. Well, if you want to if you want to be my, my backup here, here's the notes real quick. And he kind of shows you real quick. Uh, and let's let's not keep her waiting. I see a, a little uh, lull right now. Um, it, it's time for me to make my debut. And I... Uh, <laughs> Who, so we have Perrin, uh, anybody else that wants to, to play? I am proficient with dice, but that is not a musical instrument. He's like, chicka, 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 chicka. He's like a maraca. Chicka, chaka, chicka, chuck. <laughs> I do not know how to play anything at all. And uh, just throwing it out there, he's like, oh, and, you know, I'm not a cheater, I promise, but if you know any like tips or tricks or spells or abilities that could help me, um, feel free to, to give me a little, you know, uh, a little, you know, help from behind or whatever. Uh, no one, they don't really care about that stuff. It's just more about how good the music will be. They don't care if somebody helps me do it as much, but I don't know if y'all can do that. i just throwing it out there. Um, I command her to approach you. I think I gave you the most of my magical ability that I can, I am capable of doing, but. Okay, so here's how it goes, is he strides forward uh, with, with Perrin kind of. Yeah, know. one more inspiration. Are we able to give that to him or are we needing to save that, I guess? That, that could be, that could be know. good. Yeah, so if y'all want, this is pretty much the, the final roll here and we're about at our two hours, so it's honestly all wrapped up pretty perfectly here. And so he goes up to perform and uh, he starts singing in Sylvan and strumming on his uh, brand new guitar. Um, you really can't even hear the tweak of the, the off chord or anything like that. He's, what he's playing starts to sound very well. Uh, Donya kind of like wrinkles her brow as she listens. And uh, it, it instructs me for Jacinto to make a performance check. And the way it goes is that if someone's joining him, he gets advantage. However, if he is instructed to sing a love song, he loses that advantage. But on the upside, if he was... Uh, persuaded to sing a song about his mother uh, he gets a plus two to the roll so it's just going to be a straight roll with the plus two added on and then you also have an inspiration to throw on there too this is actually a really hard check for him too so it's, let's just see first okay so the first time you, he starts strumming out the guitar and his voice kind of croaks out and you can see he's really nervous and so you guys want to use the inspiration oh yeah oh my god Woo! I wish y'all could see that, but I just went from rolling a five, and then I, I used my bad dice honestly at the start, and so when it on the second one I was like, hell no, I ain't rolling my, I rolled the good one, and I just got a nat twenty on that check, baby. My, my wife's yeah, like, you're a liar, yeah. no you didn't. No, it's true, honestly. I I always play by the dice, and so sometimes that will make me crush people, and other times it doesn't, you know. So you can always oh, trust hey. me. I mean. Perrin and I, and also uh, Player Samile, we remember when, well, last two weeks ago that was happening, so yep, it can't. He would have had it's... to get a, an 18 or or higher to succeed, and he got a 20, so he will succeed. Uh, Donya Leia kind of disappears. You've got this. Raise your voice. You're right. Cheering him on. Uh, uh, and he like gets back to the hook again, and he's like, M I'm trying to give a, a song about a mom, but and he just starts singing yeah mother dearest but he's uh he's playing along and it sounds great 
Um, you see some of the other like bards in the area start to be like, "What?" And one of them even like breaks his loot over his leg, and he's like, "This is bull." And uh, Donya kind of disappears from the balcony, and then you see her uh, appear on the ground level as Jacinto. He kind of starts to put his guitar away, and he's like, oh, "Well, w- when you disappeared, I-, I didn't think you liked it." And she says, "No, no, I had to come." And get as close as I can to see the notes you're playing. It's it's wonderful. Please continue. And he strikes it up again and, and plays a little more for her until eventually she's, wow, uh, you you must come back. And, and your friends, too, if they want. I could give invitations to all. I would love to see you in uh, my, my home. And only the best, most successful bards are allowed. So kudos, little hair. And he's, like, beaming. He's so proud of himself. And so that does actually well pretty... Done. It pretty much wraps it up. Uh, you, Jacinto's hopping around the plaza in joy. He's like, oh my goodness, I can't believe it! Yes, yes, yes! And uh, he's just... Even Donya's... <laughs> well, I'll see you there. The invitations will be delivered shortly. And she kind of sweeps back up into the villa. Um, you can see she's she's kind of young for an archfey, but it seems to have a very nice demeanor and, and a pleasure to be around. The people are all around seem to, to love her and revere her as like a, an empress of sorts. But she um, she takes her leave and Jacinto comes up and, oh, wow, you know, this is the best start to my career I could ever hope for. And it's all thanks to you guys. <laughs> Yeah, now that you got your invitation, what will you do now? Good job with the instrument that we made. But obviously, it couldn't have been done without your wonderful playing skills. Oh, man, I was so nervous, too. And I just, if you guys didn't help me find that song, you know, I probably would have sang the wrong one. Or maybe, you know, I I didn't even know she liked singing in Sylvan. I would have thought she liked Common, but wow. (laughs) Yeah. Turns out she did like love songs. But, you know, what I'm going to do after this is I'm just going to buckle down, uh, maybe find me a nice college to go to and, and uh, brush up on my skills. And uh, and maybe you'll you'll see me on the big stage one day. Um, don't forget the name Jacinto. Jacinto, Jacinto. Oh, uh, d- don't let me get lost in the lights, though. I, I did owe you this. And he pulls out uh, an instrument of the bards. It's the Das Lute. Yeah, you know, I love music so much, but not every instrument is for me, and that's that's okay. That's just how life is. So I'd like you guys to have this. Hopefully you can find, you know, hopefully you can use it or find someone else who, who it fits better. Sure, thank you. Very kind. And, uh, you know, I always have a little magic item handout, so uh, over in the magic item handouts on the journal tab, I will... Uh, just so it's a little easier for you to write down for your notes so, and, and whatnot. Mary Connie, it seems this is the second invitation you've received. Yeah, it is. I don't know that I'll go visiting him again, though. <laughs> I need to go find Mitch. Yeah, y'all made too many friends. <laughs> You're like, man, we don't really have to come back and visit these people, do we? Oh, but all right, so you can see the instrument of the bards. Y'all are probably familiar. They all come with uh, the kind of the same ability, but then they all have their own like specific spells that they can use. Uh, looks like this one is a flavored in appearance only. So if you want to write that down or not, it's usually up to you. But um, it, the lute, it looks like the way that you guys had made the instrument earlier. It has a body of golden wood, strings made of spider silk, and uh, and bits and bit pieces made of elk antlers. So it's uh, pretty identical to the one y'all made earlier, if you want to flavor it as that in, in the future. It also says it has an alto clef symbol carved into the head of the instrument. That's actually the symbol of May Canta, um, if you just want to put that in your notes. Looks like uh, if you attune to the instrument, you can use it as your, uh, you know, your, your focus, but you also can use it to cast some spells. Uh, it doesn't look like it has the full list of spells on here, unfortunately. You may just have to look that up. But the the spells you get with the loot in particular, it gives you the animal friendship, says protection from energy, from fire only, and then protection from poison. So, uh, And, you know, if you're not a bard, you can always trade it for that five downtime to one of your other characters that could use it. Gives you fly, yeah, visibility, like, and yeah. levitate. Cool. 
<laughs> Heck yeah. And, uh, and <clears throat> so Jacinto says, well, it's, it's been a pleasure and, uh, I'll never forget you guys. And well, you don't really have to leave if you don't want to, you could, you could stay, but the only way back to, uh, to Toril, if you want to go back there is, is, uh, you know, taking a boat through the mist and you know what, you know what causes that mist is, <sighs> someone like me singing their heart out and he starts to like strum out on his guitar he's like stay if you want dun, 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 dun. but now's your chance to go if you want dun, 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 dun. and uh and yeah you know if your character's hanging out in the Feywild, you could stay or you could uh take your trip across the lake and head back to you know the normal world without all the talking animals <laughs> Mayor Kenny is going to start to walk it seems away. as though this place is doing quite fine without me. Take care. Ooh. And I will probably depart as well. Oh, and as he turns to leave, he hears a bark from behind him. And it's Mitch! <gasps> He's like, at third level, I get my ranger's companion. Which is yeah, you found for. him! He comes bounding out of the mist. Oh. <laughs> oh, Mitch, thank God you're back. Oh, you look like you've gotten stronger. You know, I think I might take a, a liking to this adventuring thing. You should come with me, Mitch. You see he's I, got like uh, a little scar and like some of his uh, hair has been like braided with some like weird fey beads and things. And you're like, like what, what stories do you have to tell? Right. And this is how Marikani became a Beastmaster Ranger. Old school. Congratulations. Thank nice. you. That's awesome. So uh, thank you guys for joining me. We get a little two-hour short adventure and uh, get to flex our role-play skills a bit. And you walk away with a level, ten downtime. Uh, let's uh, tally your gold up real quick. And of course you're gonna get the Das Loot, which sounds like something in German. Not that I know German. But... Das Loot. All right. So Jacinto, he also uh, palms you fifty gold, and thanks. Um, unfortunately, you did not mess with the dead elf, so you, you didn't get that one. But oh, you got the main gold from uh, from Ricardo. You got Dona Lea's prize even too. So that's a total of two hundred. Oh, fifty each. So yep, fifty each. Easy, easy math. I'm curious, how much did the elf have? Uh, he had an extra fifty on him, and then oh. There's Boys. like there's like a random combat encounter they throw in at the very end, and it's just like it's one of those things that's like if you blew through all the other end stuff, then you could like throw that in at the end. But it's I like I was willing to do it. I have the token set up and everything, but it's just kind of silly. Like it's this is the way they word it. I don't mind sharing. It says if the party breezed through the interactions and the players won an additional combat, you can introduce two high elf bards. They're angry they were not selected to go to the Archfey Palace and take their anger out on the party. I'm just like, what? <laughs> like, and they're here to kill you. <laughs> the bards are upset. They can be talked down from violence with a persuasion check. Oh, there's always next year. I'm just like, huh? Like, I mean, okay. <laughs> I was like, all right. Yeah, Actually, Perry would definitely try to talk them down. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was kind just, of, yeah. All the same, at least we, we all have actually decent persuasion, so it would probably be possible to just talk them down. Well, here you go. Here, here, I'll give you all a chance to, to earn another uh, 50 gold. The bards come out, and they're pissed. Ah, what? You're going to let that little pip squeak through? I worked for tens on tens on tens days and stuff. And uh, if y'all want, y'all can just do a group persuasion check. And if y'all succeed, then I'll give y'all 50 more gold. Or we'll have to fight for it. <laughs> or y'all can fight for it if you want, yeah. <laughs> I mean, probably wouldn't take too long, but... Persuasion... The squirrels, uh, the squirrels were the ones to fight, really. But I was like, you know, there's no point in forcing any combats. Oh, so I think we need a tiebreaker there. Uh, let's see, who had the plus? I would say Perrin. You got the seven. Why not do give us one more roll to to break it? Okay. Okay. Hey there. Yeah, so what would you say to them to uh, to calm them down? Look, I'm going to give you a few tips. Keep this on the down low and don't let anybody hear it. Stay away from love songs. Sylvan is the way to go. You know, I, I found that Goblin War Chant, I thought she would love that for its cultural uh, significance. And she didn't even look at me, bro. 
Oh man. But you're right, Sylvan. That would that's obvious. Duh! Why didn't I think of that? And alright. No, so we'll divide up a, a little bit more there. As y'all avoided hurt. another combat. Dang it, guys. No. Nah. <laughs> Eight and a half gold. So 62, Man, yeah. We go streaming, awesome. Yep, so we got one, one level, 10 downtime. The DOS loot uh, looks like 62 gold each. And that's it. No story award or anything. Cool. Yep, that's it. Thank you, guys. Let me know if y'all need anything. I'll be here for a couple more minutes, and I'll definitely post that session lock. Can we do one anymore? Uh, it looks like this is the last of this uh, this series for just this little Feywild one. But um, April, I've got some some games planned. I know next Wednesday I'm gonna run the tier two uh, sequel to the one I ran that last Wednesday. It's uh, DDAL seven zero two. It's a uh, it's like five one hour adventures, but they're all for tier two. Um, that I'm doing next Wednesday and then I think that I'm, I'm about to move so I think at the turn of the month I'm probably going to have to take that week off but then coming back uh, you'd have to check the schedule on Warhorn for the exact dates but I know we have a tier 4 game planned for uh, sun, uh, one of the Sundays uh, here let me look at the calendar real quick I can probably tell just by looking at the dates so in April 10th we have a tier 4 game uh, and then I know I have a game scheduled for like I think the Wednesday the 20th maybe and then uh, it, since I just started the Patreon thing um, it's not really going to be something I shove down people's throats or whatever but it certainly will be certain you know something that's rewarded for those that want to do it uh, and the first person he didn't sign up for the tier to get to the point where you can uh, you can uh, request a game every month but he was our first uh, pa patron, so I went ahead and uh, just gave him that perk for a one-time thing. Um, so yeah, if, if anybody wants more interest or info on the Patreon thing, I can sure talk about that, I guess, but in private more so, or, or now, I suppose. But uh, basically, I asked him if he wanted me to run a game for him, since I hey, you know, I appreciate you being the first patron, Do you, I'll run a game for you. Uh, anyways, it's going to be a Tier 4 game on the 27th of April. Um, if you're in the 1D4 club, it, it's like $4 on the Patreon. You get to, you can try to jump into that game early for like 24 hours, and then I'll, uh, and then I'll post it. He actually signed up yesterday at 9.30, so in an hour I'm going to post that game on the Warhorn for everybody else to sign up. Uh, but that'll be another Tier 4 game, and that's going to be the last week of April on that Wednesday, I think in the evening time. Um, this ran moving day this last weekend, actually. It was pretty fun. It was my first time. Oh, the you one, did the moving one. day? Yeah. I missed something, and I and one of the players stopped the game for like 45 minutes with a freaking wall of force that I could have easily bypassed if I had remembered the entity and his gaze. Yeah, But I didn't. Yeah, it's fine. I've heard about things you can do with that wall of force. <laughs> yeah, but I, I also, since there was only there was going to be five people, I did not expect anybody to do that gimmick since I know it pees me off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I didn't give anybody, I didn't give the caster, uh, uh, wow, what did that spell that destroyed one of horse? I didn't give the caster the proper spell, I didn't edit her stat block at all. And then I totally forgot that the NT has a thing with the eyes that will get rid of that, but I know now. Yeah, I haven't looked into it yet, so I don't know uh, what the hell you're talking about, but... Well, if it helps, <laughs> the, 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 the boss fight has a, a, a creature called the Entity.